Toward the end of 1981 or early 1982, I'm not sure the exact time period, but Jayatirtha's last stand in the Tatori Temple. I will tell this timeline from my personal experience, uh, my personal you know, experience and perspective, how I saw it at the time. I was living at the Detroit Temple and at that time working on the Fate Museum project and Jaya Tirtha was our GBC at the time. This is an event that I witnessed personally and I will tell it from my personal perspective, but there are hundreds of other similar stories that can be told by other devotees with their own personal experiences with other gurus through the years during this Zono Acharya time. But for this event, I'm able to share it you know, the view from my own uh, perspective. I mean, this is my own experience. In 1981, Jai Tirtha, you know, started having these major fall downs. He had been having fall downs for years, relationships with women, but it was all kept quiet. It was all kept secret. We didn't know why the GBC had forced him to take sannyas. There were rumors, but they didn't want us to know because they didn't want his disciples to know because they did. Anyway, so... Anyway, but now things are getting more and more intense in 1981. We heard the stories of him falling off Vyasasan while chanting Jaya Radhamato. Obviously, his train was coming off the rails. <laughs> in Detroit, there was uh, one, one well-liked devotee. He was a disciple of Srila Prabhupada, Brajendra Law. Prabhu Brajendra Law has since left this world uh, back in the 1990s. But in 1981, uh, he had a close friend in Britain, in, in uh, UK, who was close with Jayatirtha. When he heard of Jayatirtha's odd behavior, he contacted his devotee friend, Bajendra Law contacted his devotee friend to find out what he knew. And his friend told him that Jayatirtha was taking LSD and having illicit sex with one or more female disciples. When Bajendra Law heard this, he informed our local regional GBC secretary, who is Naveen Krishna Prabhu. This caused a lot of concern and meetings were held. There was a meeting of Srila Prabhupada's disciples. And so we all met and how to deal with this. Toward the end of 1981 or early 82, Jayatirtha made his last trip to Detroit. A Prabhupada's, and, and again, we had another Prabhupada's disciple only meeting. And this was held in Srila Prabhupada's quarters at the uh, Detroit Temple. And Jayatirtha was there, and all of Prabhupada's disciples, that, at least that could come to the meeting, were there, except Rajendra Law wasn't invited. Jayatirtha was confronted by Naveen, who told him what Rajendra Law had told Naveen. And he asked Jayatirtha if it was true. If it were true, Naveen let him know that we're all his god brothers, and he, you know, Naveen wanted Jayatirtha to know that we would all help him with his fall down. Jayatirtha put on such a performance, he should have not just been nominated, he should have won 10 Oscars for the best performance of an actor in a drama role, or he should have been thrown in jail. One or the other, or probably both. He broke into tears, and, and with what seemed like genuine humility, he went before Srila Prabhupada's murti. There's Prabhupada's murti, there's a murti of Srila Prabhupada that sits in Srila Prabhupada's quarters at the Detroit Temple. So he went before Srila Prabhupada's murti with tears in his eye, crying, and with folded hands, he kneeled before Srila Prabhupada's murti. And he said, and I'm para paraphrasing from memory, but something like, Srila Prabhupada, I don't know why my God brothers have turned on me like this, but you know that I am innocent. And he went on, Jaitirtha went on, in what was an Oscar-winning performance act, saying how the GBC had turned against him. He has been experiencing, he, he, he said that he's been experiencing very wonderful realizations of Krishna and the GBC have become envious of him and they want him to leave ISKCON because they're afraid he will become greater than they are. <laughs> and he said he has no desire to be anyone special but that he has been experiencing such wonderful spiritual realizations and ecstasies and his other GBC godbrothers, they're just envious. He then 
turned on Brigenderlaw, who, I mean, it wasn't in the room, but turned on him and said that, he told us that Ms. Brigenderlaw, he's speaking lies about him. We walked into that meeting quite certain that Jayatirtha was falling down big time. But his performance was so convincing, tears in his eyes, kneeling before Srila Prabhupada's murti, claiming his innocence before Srila Prabhupada. I mean, certainly, no disciple, especially an advanced disciple at GBC, you know, a leading disciple of Srila Prabhupada, they, no one would, would go before Srila Prabhupada's murti and tell such lies in front of Prabhupada's murti while praying to Srila Prabhupada out loud. So we walked out of that meeting thinking, my God, Chaitanya must be innocent. I mean, the rest of the GBC must be the ones who are so envious that they're just spreading such lies about him. Just the day before, we thought of Brajanala as such a nice, innocent devotee. After this meeting, the Vink banned the so-called envious troublemaker Brajanala from the temple. <clears throat> but deep inside, I knew the whole thing just seemed wrong. Well, I really wanted to believe Jayatirtha because I actually liked him. He was my temple president when I joined in 1973. I learned a lot from him, and I liked his association. But as much as I wanted to believe him, I really knew this was off. There was something just off, totally off. Then a month or two later, at the, in the March, uh, and, and at the GBC meetings, we heard that Jayatirtha left ISKCON and went to Sridhar. I will cover this in the next timeline. But here I want to uh, complete a point. After Jayatirtha left ISKCON, the word on the street, okay, the word in the temples, <laughs> was that uh, most of this, and most of it came from, the, you know, directly from the mouth of some of the GBC men, but the word was that the real troublemaker was Sridhar Maharaj. Among the rank and file members, we didn't know at that time that the gurus and the GBC members had been going to Sridhar for his guidance and association for so many years. We didn't know that the these Gurus and GBC and the Gurus were glorifying Sridhar as to be, I mean, they were glorifying Sridhar as good as Srila Prabhupada. We didn't know any of that was taking place. So when we were told that Jayatirtha was having problems, that he was falling down, he was in a weak condition, and that, you know, in that weak condition, Sridhar, you know, was, was taking advantage of him. And that Sridhar, just like Prabhupada's other envious god brothers, he saw Jayatirtha's weak condition and he took advantage of it. And he and he got Shri, I mean he got Jayatirtha to accept Sridhar. And we were told that this was the whole problem. And this is why Jayatirtha had just left ISKCON. It was 100 percent Sridhar's doing. He was the real culprit. When so much information is being kept secret and you only hear the one thing and you hear it from leaders, well, you really have no choice but to accept it. So at the time, you know, I didn't hear any other explanation as to what happened. All we were told is how the whole mess was due to that envious Sridhar Maharaj, the GBC. They just threw Sridhar under the bus and they ran over him. More on that coming up. But for me, this hardened my view against Sridhar. From that point onward, and for many decades, up until 2012, as I was researching this presentation, I was convinced that regarding Jayatirtha's leaving ISKCON, that Sridhar was totally 100% guilty, and that he had convinced Jayatirtha to leave ISKCON so that Jayatirtha would come and join him. A big, big ISKCON guru has, you know, and all, and well, at least so many of his disciples left ISKCON and now they've joined Sridhar. And I thought it was because, you know, Sridhar had done this. He was so envious and that he had taken one of the big gurus and a GBC man. And, you know, so I didn't understand the whole situation until 2012 as I was doing the uh, research on this. And then I learned that it was the GBC was the one who had gone uh, to Sridhar in March of 1978, and that it was his guidance, the GBC started the zonal Acharya system, 
and that they kept going to him for many years, taking his guidance. <clears throat> anyway, my first, um, in my first versions of this presentation back in 2008, actually on into 2011, I had painted Srila Sridhar as one of Prabhupada's envious godbrothers, who had badly, I, I took it that he was the one who gave all bad advice and badly influenced the GBC, and he was the cause of ISKCON going down the wrong path. It wasn't until 2012, in the midst of rewriting the scripts again and making this presentation, that I found and realized I had that part all wrong. For more information about how Srila Prabhupada and Krishna directed me to come to this realization, see the ancillary note, the mysterious appearance, disappearance, and reappearance of the 1978 GBC paper on initiations. Another voice-only insert. I left out an important point here that I needed to explain. And that is that in 2011, I had changed direction on how I was making this presentation. I started out to make this Amayatma's presentation. But in 2011, I gave up and just surrendered myself to Srila Prabhupada and offered him my services, uh, my services such that this will become his presentation and not mine. I offered my services to produce whatever he wanted me to present. And, uh, and so I redid all of my research on this issue with that prayer in the forefront begging for his guidance such that this will become his presentation. It was during that time that Prabhupada guided me to find the needed information that led me to totally change my view regarding Sridhar's involvement. I didn't have a, a change of view based on sentimental feelings, but Srila Prabhupada guided me to the evidence and the real truth, and it was those evidences that changed my views on this point. Uh, I do give more details in the ancillary note, but I wanted to add this uh, add this point in here. Uh, all right, how do you?